Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. I've got an issue with my tomato seedlings. I did a video on this and a lot of you had chatted back and forth with me and some had suggested to bring the seedlings outside because they can get, I think what's called edema. Um, edema, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but basically if they're growing in conditions that there's not any wind flow like inside and there's not enough sunlight, um, they can get edema, uh, whatever that is. But so I've been bringing them out for that. The other thing I thought maybe it was herbicide uh, because I did use some compost. So I used compost that I had made in my compost bins, but most of that came from straw inside my chicken coop. Um, so I would just kind of take that straw out, put it in the compost bin along with kitchen scraps, some brown material and stuff like that. So what I think happened was I got some herbicide in there, um, that really bad type of herbicide that has like a long, um, drawn out uh, half-life that just kind of ruins your garden because I, there's a few reasons why and I'll show you guys that in a minute but it was all straw and, and a lot of times they're spraying straw and this straw came from the first compost bins that I had set up when I moved into this place when I first started so I was not testing it for that herbicide at the time so it's possible it had that in there now what makes me nervous is I don't know what other compost has that and I keep on taking old compost and putting it in with the new to kind of kickstart that decom decomposition process. So I think all my compost is got that in it. So I think that is the main issue. Now I'm still keeping these outside in hopes that they come forth and kind of do something. But let me show you why I think it is the herbicide. So this pot here and this pot here both have potatoes in it that I had started and it's the same dirt that I used. Basically a mix of that compost with the coconut core and some other stuff. And if you look, the potato's coming up and it's got singed ends. It's just, it's not doing well. It's funky shaped. Um, it's having a lot of the same issues, curling and all that. It's not doing well. So I think that's the issue because potatoes are very sensitive as well to this herbicide. Here, I had a couple pop up, like right there, there's a piece. You can, if I dig around it, you'll see this is, there's some green. As soon as it reaches the surface here, it starts to die back. So I think maybe it is the compost issue because these potatoes should be growing just fine. Now what's interesting is a lot of that compost has, I've been throwing in these beds and most everything does well. But I am having some yellowing going on in some of my garlic. I don't know if garlic is sensitive to that herbicide. And what I'm talking about is... I don't know the, all the technical names for it, but like the blanket term is grazon. And it's the stuff that they spray, it's a lot of times in cow manure. Manure! I hate manure! Um, and stuff because it, um, they spray it on fields to keep weeds down and allow those grains and grasses to come up because it doesn't affect grasses or grains. And when the cattle eat it, then it passes through their gut and in their system and it does not break down in their stomachs. High heat doesn't really break it down and it's really difficult to get rid of. And it can kind of make growing very difficult for years. And I've been dumping it all in every single one of my beds. And I do know I had a lot of trouble last year with tomatoes and peas. I just couldn't get them to come up. Now I'm getting some peas here. They're doing pretty decent. I don't see any issues with them. They're doing really well. In fact, I got to stake these pretty soon because um, they're growing really well and these are better than any other ones I've had but it's been a year that this has been cycling so even though it's a the half-life is you know like five years it's still less of it I think you know maybe washed out with rains and stuff like that so here is doing somewhat okay it's not affecting the peas which are very sensitive to it um, this bed has straw all through it same type of straw okay and uh, there's nothing no effects here but I don't know if that stuff affects I mean it's supposed to affect all broadleaf which I would think lettuce and spinach would be considered broadleaf but it's it's not really affecting those they are growing great my garlic all the garlic has a little bit of this so I don't know if that's a maybe specific garlic disease or if that's just normal with the fluctuation of the temperatures up and down here I mean the the new leaves all look pretty good so this is what I think I'm gonna do I'm I'm just too nervous about it I don't want to end up just destroying my garden 
hate to do this, but I've got all the compost over here that I think I'm going to have to get rid of. And it stinks because I've been working at this compost for a while. And I think I'm going to have to switch from straw in my chicken coop to something else. Uh, probably wood shavings for now. I'll look into, I know that they've got hemp and, uh, that is really good, but that's pretty pricey. And I don't have my coop set up as deep litter method. It just doesn't work. But I think we're going to have to dump these. And by the way, if you guys remember that compost video I made, I mean, you remember this was all the way to the brim. It's really broken down quite a bit already. This is the one, the newer one being worked on. There's ants all through here and everything. I mean, it's all breaking down. It's looking great. But I'm just nervous. I don't want to end up having another issue like this again. So it's pretty heavy, but I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go take this, drag it over to a location back in my property back here that I don't really care about. I'm not going to grow anything and just dump it. It stinks. That's right, it stinks! So I'm pretty bummed about it, honestly, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So luckily, right now, this is somewhat light. It's not super heavy because it kind of, I let it dry out a little bit. There we go. There's that one. Excuse the train, guys. I live right next to a train. Every time I try to film, it pops up. But you can tell, obviously, it's not breaking down yet. Um, it's still just hay. So... You know, maybe I test this in a little bit. I mean, this is basically, I could use this as a hay bale grow if it's if it's okay. I, I can put a couple like bean seedlings in here and see how they do. And if they're fine, then I can just scoop this up and put it back in. But I think I, I want to, I'll have to spray this out to make sure all the residue is out of it. But I have a feeling that is the issue. So I'm going to get the other one, dump that as well. Then we'll spray this out. And we're gonna start the chicken coop with pine shavings instead, because that definitely will not have that graze on. I'm gonna put this over here. We'll spray it out later. Let's get this one over. This one's a little heavier, actually. There's more stuff, even though it looks like less. It's compacted more because it's been sitting longer. We got tons of ants in here. Don't really feel like getting bit up. We do get fire ants. <sighs> there we go. And that one obviously is broken down a little bit more. You can see that one's a new one, fresh. So that's already started quite a bit. All right, let's get the hose over here and hose those down. All right, so let's get the outside hose down a little bit. Then we'll really get, then we'll really get this inside completely gone of any of the residue, hopefully. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but. Now, unfortunately, there's some in the bottom here, but I don't, I have a feeling it's not going to necessarily come up through the compost here, maybe a little bit, but it's definitely going to be far and away better, even if a little bit of that is in there. I guess it's not the end of the world, but definitely don't want the whole compost system fully filled with stuff that has that residue. So let's get this one sprayed off. <coughs> Starting anew with the compost, unfortunately. So the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be able to bring in some more compost for this bin. I've gotta start this off with some chicken bedding We'll be layering this with food scraps and stuff, and I, it's gonna be another six months till I'll have my own made compost that I can use in my garden, unfortunately. Just, it stinks. stinks. I would far rather not take a chance of this, considering that I'm pretty sure that's what was happening. Quite positive, actually. You know, I've got all this straw all around here, um, so this area is probably not gonna grow a whole lot, except for grasses. Um, which is fine because I'm not planning on growing a whole lot right here. 
and I don't think this is going to seep too far. I've got some garden beds right there. It's not going to necessarily seep through the ground too far over there. By the time it hits there, it's going to be negligent, even if it does. We'll just keep this as a compost area. And like I said, I don't think it's going to seep up through there. And if it does, it's going to be so small amount negligent that it won't matter. Plus, I've got it already all in my beds. So all these beds, I mean, I'm still growing stuff. And what is interesting is this bed right here that has the garlic, I grew a ton of beans. I uh, Black eyed peas are basically a bean. And they're supposed to be super uh, susceptible to this herbicide. And they seem to do just fine. Now, I did have a major problem with aphids. And they really kind of decimated that crop a little bit. So maybe, maybe they were weakened by that and it just wasn't enough to keep them from growing, but it was enough to keep them from being super healthy and keep the aphids off. That's, that could be it. I don't know hundred percent. It's just interesting to me. So these two were the first beds I put in. I definitely have put compost in both of these, amending them. In fact, I threw some of that compost in this before I put those beans in. So I'm not really sure about it, but I just don't want to take the chance. So I'm really nervous it was a herbicide issue causing all this weird growth. Some of these look okay, some don't. Like this one looks fine. Um, this one looks fine. This one looks pretty good and this one, but a lot of these are just not doing well. And if they look okay, they're just, they're not, you know, a lot, some of these are just super twisted leaves and everything. I, I don't know if they're even gonna make it, but yeah, so there we go. I brought them outside. Hopefully that helps with them. Hopefully the more watering of these, the, the more that herbicide's gonna leak out and hopefully that helps. And that'll kind of get most of that out. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but maybe maybe they'll make it maybe they will maybe it's just not enough to kill them off if you guys have any ideas or suggestions about this let me know in the comment section below i appreciate in the last video a lot of you did suggest some stuff and i'm taking those into account and like i said i'm bringing these outside hopefully that helps um, it's getting actual uv sun rather than grow lights and some people say that that can really be beneficial for tomatoes so hopefully this helps them um, i'm keeping from watering them too much i'm not going to let them dry out but i don't want to keep them too moist because i was getting some mold growth as well so if you guys could let me know in the comment section what you think about all this if that was a good idea to dump all my compost or not if you guys like this kind of content please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates also if you could hit the like button it would really help me and the channel out and i will see you on the next video now you guys try to escape the daily grind